In the last video, part one, I repaired the legs on the display unit. I made new wings for one of the legs and after sanding the leg, I needed to try to match the color of the other legs onto this one. I first applied some of this dark teak stain and that did a pretty good job of blending in the color of the new wood with the old. Because the other legs had a slight red colored tint to them, I thought I would try some of this mahogany varnish which also has a red tint to it and that helped to blend the colors even more. And by this point there was really no discernible difference between the colors of the repaired leg and the old ones. So after letting the varnish dry, I applied some spray varnish. When that had dried, I sanded at 400 grit to get the finish smooth, wiped away any dust and applied a second coat. And I was happy with how that looked, it was a really good match, so I left it there. Next I did some sanding to the side of the unit which had some damage to it, and then I started work sanding down the top. The top was solid wood, so I didn't need to worry about sanding through a veneer. I sanded at 80 grit with my random orbit sander and the old finish clogged up the paper quite a lot, so I went through two or three discs. Then I sanded at 120 and 240 grit by hand. I also sanded the veneered back panel by hand. For some reason it hadn't occurred to me to look and see if I could remove the back panel first, which was a bit stupid of me, and more on that later. Then I wiped the surface clean with some mineral spirits. I did this just to check how the wood might look with finish applied, to make sure that any imperfections had been sanded out. Next I applied some boiled linseed oil to nourish the wood. When the oil had dried I applied spray varnish. I chose this as a top coat because I knew it would be hard wearing, which I think is necessary for a top like this as it's bound to have some drinks and things put on it at some point in its life. Then I wet sanded with mineral spirits at 400 grit to smooth over the finish. Now before I got to applying a second coat of the spray varnish, I noticed that the back panel was simply screwed onto the top from underneath. So at this point I created some more work for myself and decided it would be better to remove it as that would give me access to the whole top and better access to the veneer on the back panel too. But of course that meant that I needed to start again with the finishing process. So I used a cabinet scraper to remove as much of that top coat that I'd just applied as I could and then sanded back to bare wood once again. It was quite annoying having to do this again, but it was my own fault for not thinking it through before jumping straight into it, and I figured it was worthwhile doing this again and doing it properly. So after sanding again and wiping away the dust again, I applied spray varnish again, then I wet sanded again at 400 grit, and this time applied a second coat. Then I wet sanded at 600 grit and applied a third and final coat. Now that I've got this back panel removed, I've been thinking about what I can do about these areas of chipped veneer. As you can see, they're pretty bad in some areas. And I've come up with three possible options. The first option would be to rip off about 10 millimeters from the bottom of this panel, because that's where the majority of the veneer damage is. The second option is to rotate this and have the back of the panel as the front instead. But the problem with that is that there's a nasty knot right in the middle of the panel, which is unfortunate. And the third option that I'm considering is to remove all of this veneer. I would probably use the belt sander for that and I could see what the wood is like underneath and hopefully this knot would be less prominent on this side. And I'm starting to think that the third option is probably the one that I will take because the veneer is just in such bad condition. I can feel it coming loose all the way along the bottom of the panel. I used an 80 grit paper on the belt sander to remove the veneer. That knot is definitely less prominent on this side, so I think I'm going to have a go at staining this to match the rest of the cabinet. I sanded at 80, 120 and then 240 grit with my random orbit sander to remove any marks left by the belt sander. And then I used the dark teak stain again to better match the colour of the top. 
After staining, I sanded by hand at 400 grit and then applied some more of the mahogany varnish to give it more of a red tint again. And when that was dry, I finished with spray varnish, sanding between coats again using the same method as I had for the top. And it turned out pretty good. So then I added the old screws again, but the panel still fitted quite loose, so I drilled some new pilot holes using a right angle drill attachment, and then added new screws, and it was nice and solid after that. The next job was to make new shelves for the unit, so I first measured up the internal dimensions. For making the shelves, I'd use some of these oak veneered pieces of MDF that I salvaged some time ago from a bookcase. I'd used this stuff before on a previous project, this pair of oak bedside tables, which is another video on my channel. I first needed to remove the solid oak trim. These were joined with glue and biscuits, but a mallet helped to take these pieces off. I cut some pieces to length at the mitre saw, and then I drew one half of a semicircle just freehand and cut that out on the bandsaw. I used a handsaw to finish off the cut at the halfway mark. I could then use the off cut flipped over to mark up the other half of the shelf and I cut that out on the bandsaw too. I also cut off the protruding biscuits from the back edge of the shelves at the bandsaw too. Next I could scrape off the old finish with a cabinet scraper and sand back to bare wood. I then used the solid oak pieces of trim that I removed earlier to make new edge banding for the shelves to hide the MDF edges. So I ripped some very thin pieces of oak, these were probably between 1 and 2 millimeters thick. And then I could glue on these pieces holding them in place with an F clamp in the middle and plenty of masking tape. After a few hours I removed the tape and then used a block plane to flush trim the edge banding to the shelf. I didn't have enough of the dark teak stain left to do these shelves, so to get them to better match the rest of the unit, I used some walnut coloured brie wax instead. I wasn't really trying for a perfect match here, just a better match. With one shelf finished, I could then mark up the shape onto another piece and make the second shelf in the same way as I had for the first. Next it was time to fit the shelves and I found that to get them in through the doors and onto the pins needed to be done in a certain order, otherwise they just wouldn't fit. Finally I just needed to give the unit a good clean. I used glass cleaner on the glass and hoovered the inside. So that's the display cabinet finished and I'm really glad I managed to salvage this. As soon as I saw a photo of it I knew I wanted to work on it and give it a new lease of life. I don't have space for it in my home unfortunately, but after posting a photo of it on social media I do have a buyer lined up for it and I'm really happy that it's going to a good home. This project took me around 15 hours to complete and it's not the sort of project where you can really make much of a financial profit because these units just aren't fashionable at the moment so they can be bought second hand for a relatively small amount of money. But they do tend to be in really bad shape whereas this one is probably stronger now than it's ever been and also I just think it looks fantastic. I really like the style of this particular cabinet. If this unit had been more of a valuable piece of furniture then I definitely would have done more of a sympathetic restoration. For example I wouldn't have used any modern screws but this project was more about fixing something up and making it a useful piece of furniture rather than a restoration as such. And the reason why I'm pointing that out is because on project videos like this one I tend to get two different sides of criticism in the comments section. I'll either get people asking why I'm wasting my time on a piece of furniture like this one or I'll get people telling me that I haven't done the restoration sympathetically enough. But what's important to me is that I've saved this piece of furniture from being thrown away and it's now a useful piece of furniture and it will be for many years to come. One thing that I didn't manage to fix on this project was finding a key for the lock on the door. There is a lock number written on the inside of the lock and I'd hoped that I could buy one 
but unsurprisingly it doesn't look like they are available to buy anymore. So what I might do before the buyer picks this up is fit a brass handle to the door just so that it's easier to open and close. Thanks for watching as always, please subscribe to my channel if you'd like to see more weekly videos from me and if you'd like to support my channel and what I do please consider becoming a patron over on my Patreon page, links in the description box below. Thank you.